Okay, dear participants, welcome back to the last session of Appendix 3 online training course. We uh, have yeah, tenders and contracts continued, continued from uh, last class, yesterday's class. We pick up the session. We have E.M. Chandrasekhar, his chief OS from PC Office of Central Railway. Welcome, sir. It's over to you to come in the session. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Welcome to all participants. Good morning. So, yesterday I presented some items, important items uh, regarding this topic, uh, along with some possible questions that may be asked in your upcoming uh, Appendix 3 examination. So, today I'll make a quick, um, quick uh, uh, recapitulation of the items what I have discussed yesterday. So, yesterday I have discussed the subject of this subject. So, I will quickly recur karke some more items which are important, equally important, and some uh, questions may be asked from that topic also. So, it will be a repetition along with some new items. So, here, uh, yesterday I explained about the uh, planning of works. So, before calling the tenders, uh, the works will be planned. What are the works to be taken in the next year? Uh, duly keeping in mind uh, what is the incomplete works expenditure and the new works put together, the proposals will be sent to railway board. And after getting the approval from the parliament, then the allocation will be done. So, ye jo works hai, uh, the classification will be done like this under Think Book, under LAW, LAW, and LS works. So, this is about the uh, planning of works, works program that is concerned. LAW means list of approved works. So you may get a uh, you know abbreviation. What is LAW? List of approved works. Then you also may get LSWB, lump sum works program. Okay. Uh, yesterday I discussed with you regarding the checklist. Tender bulani se pehle kya kya items ensure karna hai. Uh, usme important cheez hai. Sanction of detail estimate. So tender agar bula ja sakta hai without detail estimate. Ha. Yes. Tender can be called even in the absence of detail estimate. Only the requirement is pre-waiting of the tender schedule by the finance. That is the thing. Other things uh, you have to ensure before calling the tender. Next, tender documents in general I have spoken. Eligibility criteria also discussed. Eligibility criteria, uh, this tender ka value 50 lakh ke bhar ke hota hai. Eligibility criteria stipulate for that. We have to stipulate two eligibility conditions only when our tender value is more than 50 lakhs. One is technical eligibility and the second one is financial eligibility. So you may get what are, uh, what are the requirements for fulfilling the eligibility, technical eligibility criteria. Uh, three certificates equivalent to 30%, two certificates equivalent to 40%, and one certificate equivalent to 60%. This may say any of these three, the tenderer has to fulfill for, uh, towards eligibility for the technical eligibility criteria. So this also I discussed with you yesterday, the short notes can come. Uh, how many? 30% 3, 40% 2, and 60% 1 worker. And what is the qualifying period? It is during the last 7 years. That also, they may ask, what, what is the qualifying period for fulfillment of the technical eligibility criteria in work standards? You can say 7 years. Earlier it was 3 years only, now it is 7 years. Here, uh, I would like to uh, tell one more thing regarding the service contracts. Ye works tenders may technical eligibility claim my job. Service contracts may service contract ka matlab ye outsourcing, housekeeping, jo bhi coach maintenance, jo mechanical department karte hai, they are all coming under service contracts. They are also having general conditions of contract like works tenders. So works may jo GCC hai, general conditions of contract, same general conditions of contract. Service contracts may be high. So service contract may have eligibility conditions high, same eligibility conditions. Take high technical eligibility, 
दूसरा है फाइनेंशियल एलिजिबिलिटी इसमें और उसमें क्या फर्क है वर्क स्टैंडर्ड में एलिजिबिलिटी टेक्निकल एलिजिबिलिटी और सर्विस में टेक्निकल एलिजिबिलिटी इतना ही फर्क है सर्विस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स में सर्विस टेंडर्स में सर्विस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट टेंडर्स में सेम टेंडर मस्ट हैव कंप्लीटेड 35% ऑफ वर्क जस्ट रिमेंबर इट इज 35% ऑफ द वर्क ड्यूरिंग द लास्ट 3 इयर्स हियर इट इज 30% थ्री सर्टिफिकेट्स देयर इट इज ओनली 35% ड्यूरिंग द लास्ट 3 इयर्स क्वालिफाइंग पीरियड इधर 7 साल है उधर 3 साल है उधर एक ही परसेंटेज है 35% और उसमें सर्टिफिकेट लेने के लिए ऑन गोइंग सर्विस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट भी चलता है इन द सर्विस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स ऑन गोइंग सर्विस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट वेयर द परसेंटेज ऑफ द वर्क हैज क्रॉस 35% दैट इज आल्सो एलिजिबल दैट इज द डिफरेंस सो सर्विस कॉन्ट्रैक्ट्स में दैट इज द एलिजिबिलिटी सिमिलरली कमिंग टू फाइनेंशियल एलिजिबिलिटी सेम एज इन द केस ऑफ वर्क स्टैंडर्ड्स इट इज 150% same in the case of service con uh, contract tenders also it is 150% here 3 years there also it is 3 years the only difference in the eligible technical eligibility condition is with regard to the percentage that is the only difference otherwise both are same okay and in that uh, if it is above 50 lakhs in the service contract tenders if the service contract tender is more than 50 lakhs it has to be called in two stages that is called two packet system technical and financial that also i will discuss with you ah there is a two packet system of tendering you can get a question what is two packet system of tendering two packet system of tendering is nothing but the tender is called in two stages first packet is called technical packet second one is called financial bid when the two packet system of tendering is uh, resorted to when the tender value is more than 10 crores in work tender i am talking about when the tender value is more than 10 crores 10 crores se zyada hai to two packet system mein bula dete hain agar if it is less than 10 crores it will be in the single stage so in this first first stage it is called technical packet so suppose there are five participants okay the all the technical packets of these five participants will be opened and scrutinized as per the eligibility conditions laid down in the tender so whoever gets qualified suppose out of five only three are getting qualified in the first stage only those three tenderers financial bid will be opened in the second stage so here we will not be influenced by the rate quoted as in the case of single Uh, stage tendering. So here, two packet system, two packet system ka tendering, 10 crore se jada hai to uh, compulsorily we have to invite in two two packet system mode. If if you want to call in the single stage mode, then you have to take finance concurrence and general manager's approval for going ahead with the single stage tendering. So a, a question may come in two packet system tendering. It is also open tender. it is not a limited tender it is a open tender it is also invited through online e tendering mode so the only thing is 10 crores above compulsory 10 crores less not compulsory okay the first stage is called technical bid and the second one is called financial bid so whoever gets qualified in the first stage uska bid financial bid open ho jata hai jiska tender disqualify hota hai first stage mein technical bid mein उसका फाइनेंशियल बिट नहीं कर दे उसका काली ईएमडी वापस कर देते तब का तरी दैट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस देन वन मोर थिंग आई वांट टू टेल व्हेन यू आर प्रिपेयरिंग द शेड्यूल वी जनरली प्रिपेयर द शेड्यूल विल बी प्रिपेयर द एस्टीमेट ऑन द शेड्यूल विल बी प्रिपेयर बेस्ड ऑन द लास्ट एक्सेप्टेड रेट्स हाउ द एस्टीमेट विल बी प्रिपेयर एस्टीमेट फॉर द वर्क विल बी प्रिपेयर बेस्ड ऑन द Last accepted rates for the same work. Okay. उसके लिए रेलवे बोर्ड ने ये आईआरयू एसएसओ और उसको बोलते हैं इंडियन रेलवे यूनिफाइड स्टैंडर्ड शेड्यूल ऑफ रेट्स एंड स्पेसिफिकेशंस. So you may be getting some abbreviation. What is आईआरयू एसएसओ और? You have to expand this. Indian Railway is unified standard schedule of rates and specifications for works and materials. 
so this is introduced implemented from 2010 ye works items ke liye permanent way items ke liye ek separate uh, ussr hai similarly on the same pattern so estimate will be prepared based on the iru ssor jo bhi items usme hai wo aapke work ke liye kya chahiye wo pick up karke estimate banate so you may get what is the expansion of what is the full form of iru ssor so you can write that then uh, performance guarantee bhi aapse discuss kiya tha kal mein tender finalize hone ke baad we will give letter of acceptance usko bolte hai loa so ye loa within 21 days 21 din ke andar wo jama karna hai kitna 5% abhi गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया मिनिस्ट्री ऑफ फाइनेंस ने एक रिलैक्सेशन दे दिया परफॉर्मेंस गारंटी को तीन परसेंट बना दिया पांच परसेंट से लेके तीन परसेंट कब तक ये थर्टी वन ट्वेल्व टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी थ्री बिकॉज ऑफ द कोविड सिचुएशन बिकॉज ऑफ द इकोनॉमिक कंडीशन गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया हैज गिवेन रिलैक्सेशन इंस्टेड ऑफ फाइव परसेंट इट इज ओनली थ्री परसेंट अप टू सिक्योरिटी डिपॉजिट रिलीज करने के लिए पावर्स किधर दिया 11 पार्ट ए 11 बी में पावर्स आर हैव बीन गिवन फॉर द अथॉरिटी नेक्स्ट स्पेशल कंडीशंस ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इसमें ए टेंडर all the works tenders will be governed by instructions uh, general conditions of contract special conditions of contract and drawings anything related to the work ye pura milke a schedule ye pura milke isko tender document banta hai isme ek khas karke ek dekhiye for 20% limitation clause on claims amount what do you mean by this this percent limitation clause on claims amount matlab जब भी कॉन्ट्रैक्टर काम करता है अगर उसमें जो भी क्लेम्स उठाता है एज पर क्लास नंबर 63-64, ओके 63-64 लास्ट क्लासेस ऑफ जीसीसी, उसमें क्या बोलता है सेटलमेंट ऑफ क्लेम्स अगर उसका कुछ क्लेम है तो रिजल्व कैसा करना है और उसका रेस्ट्रिक्शन कितना है वो क्लेम्स जरूर रेस कर सकते दैट विल बी सब्जेक्ट टू आर्बिट्रेशन आर्बिट्रेटर विल बी अपॉइंटेड whenever he wants to raise claims he has to restrict this claim amount only to 20% of the agreement value or 20% of the executed value whichever is less so you may get a uh, objective type what should be the what is the restricted amount of the claims you can say 20% of the agreement value or 20% of the executed value main aapko example deke samjhata hu suppose you are given one work worth of 1 crore to a contractor okay with completion time of 6 months so a contractor ne aur 6 mahine leke he has completed work only to extent of 80 lakhs matlab usme kuch 20 lakhs aisi savings hai zarurat nahi aisi so against 1 crore worth of contract contractor has done 80 lakhs and extension of time is also given to the contractor now this extension was given on railway account so what contractor has done after completion he has asked for some claims saying that oh last ho gaya usko nuksan ho gaya ye kaam karne se railway account mein dene se delay hone se to usko bolte hai claim claim for the compensation to wo claim kitna uh, claim kar sakte hai amount ke mutabik kitna claim kar sakte 
वो ये कंडीशन बोलता है स्पेशल कंडीशन 20 परसेंट एग्रीमेंट वैल्यू मेरा कितना है एक करोड़ काम किया कितना होना अस्सी लाख दट इज एटी लैक्स सो ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ वन करोड़ और ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ एटी लैक्स विच एवर इज लेस सो हियर माई एग्जीक्यूटेड वैल्यू इज लेस दट इज एटी लैक्स सो ही कैन प्रेजेंट क्लेम्स ओनली अप टू ट्वेंटी परसेंट ऑफ एग्जीक्यूटेड वैल्यू दट इज एटी लैक्स दट मीन सिक्सटीन लैक्स सोलह लाख कर लग तक ही कैन प्रेजेंट हिज क्लेम्स वो भी इट इज सब्जेक्ट टू एडुकेशन just like he presents claims worth of 16 lakhs because of this 20% restriction it doesn't mean that he is going to take away this uh, you know 16 lakhs it is again subject to arbitration arbitrator tay karta hai kitna dena kaisa dena aur kya justification hai kya documentary proof hai upra so isme i want to stress only on this particular clause 20% limitation clause on claims amount which are is less agreement value or executed value और इंसेंटिव बोनस क्लास क्या होता है सपोज आपने छह महीने दिया काम करने के लिए वो चार महीने में खत्म कर दिया कौन सा वर्क डबलिंग और ट्रैफिक फैसिलिटीज इसको बोलते हैं माइलस्टोन वर्क्स ये माइलस्टोन वर्क्स मतलब एक टाइम के अंदर कंप्लीट खत्म होना चाहिए उसमें कुछ एक्सटेंशन नहीं दिया जाता है वो केसेस में अगर कॉन्ट्रेक्टर ने एक महीने और दो महीने पहले टारगेट डेट के पहले से कर्तन करे तो उसको वन परसेंट इंसेंटिव मिलेगा उसको वन परसेंट बोनस इंसेंटिव बोलते उसको इंसेंटिव बोनस क्लास ये इंसेंटिव बोनस क्लास भी सिक्स परसेंट तक लिमिट है ओके इट कैन नॉट क्रॉस सिक्स परसेंट तो उसको बोनस इंसेंटिव क्लास देन वी डिस्कस टू टेंडर सिस्टम टू पैकेट सिस्टम ऑफ टेंडरिंग हो गया फिर बाद में आई हैव डिस्कस विथ यू रिगार्डिंग दिस ओपन टेंडर्स 99.5 परसेंट ए फाइव ए वन के अंदर ये पावर्स जो दिया गया ओके और लिमिटेड टेंडर लिमिटेड टेंडर बुलाने के लिए अप्रूव लिस्ट ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्टर्स चाहिए अप्रूव लिस्ट ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्टर्स कितने हैं थ्री टाइप्स है ए कैटेगरी बी कैटेगरी एंड सी कैटेगरी और नेक्स्ट है स्पेशल लिमिटेड टेंडर स्पेशल लिमिटेड टेंडर कब बुलाते हैं इसको only in case of specialized nature of works consultancy works okay and having some element of urgency special limited tenders bulane ke liye wo proposal ka accounts ka concurrence zaruri hai it is compulsory to take finance concurrence for special limited tender and the selection of names che nahi you may get how many uh, tenderers should be invited for special limited tender you should say six but not less than four सिंगल टेंडर कब बुला जाता है इमरजेंसी में ये भी डिस्कस कर दिया कल व्हाट आर द कैटेगरीज क्लास ए कॉन्ट्रैक्टर्स का मॉनेटरी वैल्यू कितना है बोल के पूछ सकते ए वन क्रोर से लेके अप टू फाइव क्रोर्स दे कमांडर ए क्लास कॉन्ट्रैक्टर्स और मीडियम कॉन्ट्रैक्टर्स है बी है वो ट्वेंटी फाइव लैक्स से लेके ए करोड़ तक और स्मॉल कॉन्ट्रैक्टर्स उसको बोलते हैं सी क्लास कॉन्ट्रैक्टर्स उसका जो भी वर्क उन्होंने किया पिछले तीन साल में अप टू पच्चीस लाख अप टू ट्वेंटी फाइव लैक्स दे कम अंडर दिस क्लास कैटेगरी सी सिंगल टेंडर का भी मैं बता दिया था सीए के से अलग से पावर्स है पांच करोड़ तक क्योंकि उसके पास टाइम माइलस्टोन वर्क्स बोलते हैं गेज कन्वर्शन ट्रैफिक फैसिलिटीज न्यू लाइंस का उसके लिए जब भी सिंगल टेंडर बुला जाता है वो फंड एग्जास्ट हो जाता है इसीलिए उसको ज्यादा पावर्स पांच करोड़ तक दे दिया गया पीसी के पास नहीं उतना पावर पीसी का पावर है खाली बीस लाख पर केस पी है छोड़ी अदर देन सी ए पीसीएमई और पीसीई पीसीडब्ल्यू दे आर हैविंग पावर्स टू कॉल सिंगल टेंडर ओनली अप टू ट्वेंटी लैक्स पर केस एंड मैक्सिमम लिमिट इज वन क्रोर एंड डीआरएम का पावर्स है खाली टेन लैक्स पर केस एंड एनुअल लिमिट इज ओनली फिफ्टी लैक्स देन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ टेंडर कमिटी ये एक लेवल ज्यादा होता है नॉर्मल लेवल में अगर सपोज पांच करोड़ का टेंडर बुलाया उसमें कौन बैठते हैं सीनियर जे ग्रेड लेवल कमिटी बैठते हैं सपोज इफ द टेंडर इज कॉल्ड इन सिंगल टेंडर मोड एचओडी कमिटी विल सिट एंड फाइनलाइज दैट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ दिस यू कैन इमेगेट क्वेश्चन व्हाट इज द कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन ऑफ टेंडर कमिटी इन सिंगल टेंडर यू हैव टू से वन स्टेप हायर देन द मेंबर्स नॉमिनेटेड इन केस ऑफ ओपन और लिमिटेड
ए आई आर ईपीएस इसका मतलब क्या है ये इमेगेटिव क्वेश्चन व्हाट इज द फुल फॉर्म ऑफ आई आर ईपीएस इंडियन रेलवे इलेक्ट्रॉनिक प्रोक्यूरमेंट सिस्टम एक अप्रिविएशन पूछते हैं इसका एक्सपेंशन क्या है ये इंडियन रेलवे इलेक्ट्रॉनिक प्रोक्यूरमेंट सिस्टम नाउ एनी टेंडर नो मैनुअल फाइनलाइजेशन ऑल टेंडर्स हैव टू बी इनवाइटेड ऑनलाइन तो ऑनलाइन में टेंडर बुलाने के लिए ऑनलाइन में ऑक्शन करने के लिए रिवर्स ऑक्शन करने के लिए ये पूरा जो है ये मॉड्यूल है ये कौन डेवलप किया क्रिस ने डेवलप किया सी आर आई एस सेंटर फॉर रेलवे इंफॉर्मेशन सिस्टम एज डेवलप दिस मॉड्यूल कॉल्ड आई आर ई पी एस इरेप्स जिसमें वक्स टेंडर्स बुला जाता है स्टोर टेंडर्स का और ऑक्शन पूरा मॉड्यूल इसमें अवेलेबल है ओके okay. इसमें टेंडर फाइनलेशन किए पावर्स किसके पास क्या क्या पावर्स है अप टू फोर क्रोर्स सेलेक्शन ग्रेड जे ग्रेड के एक्सेप्ट इसमें पचास लाख तक कमिटी नहीं है डायरेक्ट एक्सेप्टेंस सो इमेजिएटिव क्वेश्चन व्हाट व्हाट इज द वेदर टेंडर कमिटी इज रिक्वायर्ड फॉर एनी टेंडर अप टू फिफ्टी लैक्स यू हैव टू से नो क्योंकि ई टेंडरिंग में ऑनलाइन टेंडरिंग में पचास लाख तक डायरेक्ट एक्सेप्टेंस अभी तो टेंडर कमिटी रेलवे बोर्ड ने पावर्स दे दिया मतलब एक जूनियर स्केल ऑफिसर पुटअप नोट पुटअप करके सीनियर स्केल ऑफिसर से एक्सेप्टेंस ले लेता है उसको बोलते हैं डायरेक्ट एक्सेप्टेंस कब तक ये फिफ्टी लैक्स तक अगर आपका टेंडर वैल्यू पचास लाख के बढ़ गए है तो मोर देन फिफ्टी लैक्स अप टू फोर क्रोर्स देन टू मेंबर कमिटी विल बी सिटिंग Not three member. What is the level of uh, what is the composition of the tender committee for tender values between fifteen lakhs to four crores? You have to say two member committee. Two member tender committee will be uh, finalizing the tenders value in between above fifty lakhs up to four crores. Anything more than four crores up to three hundred crores, it is three member committee. एक टू मेंबर कमेटी और थ्री मेंबर कमेटी में फाइनेंस मेंबर मस्ट बी देयर अपार्ट फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट इंजीनियर एग्जीक्यूटिव फाइनेंस मेंबर इज कंपलसरी इन केस ऑफ थ्री मेंबर कमेटी थर्ड मेंबर कैन बी फ्रॉम एस एन टी और इलेक्ट्रिकल उसको बोलते हैं सिस्टर डिपार्टमेंट मगर फाइनेंस मेंबर टेंडर कमेटी इज मस्ट इन टू मेंबर और थ्री मेंबर तो दीज आर द मॉनिटरी लेवल्स For acceptance of the tenders, so you may get a question: What is the monetary limit for acceptance of, say, five crores, like that? The quotations का भी मैं बता दिया था. Tender is dispensed uh, करके, dead quotation देके, जो काम करवाना है, जो पंद्रह दिन और maximum एक महीने के अंदर, जो भी emergency work है, which is costing below ten lakhs, not above ten lakhs, below ten lakhs. If it is very urgently required, instead of going for normal tenders, that is open tender or limited tender, which is a time-consuming process, railway board has given powers to dispense with calling of quotations and uh, sorry calling of tenders and invite quotations. So, its powers me have told me that what are the powers of J grade officer in quotation? A question can come. You can say up to five crores with kind of finance concurrence. Okay, with finance concern, and what are the quotation powers for SA grade officer? It is to up to two uh, more than five lakhs, up to ten lakhs per case with finance concerns. And its annual ceiling limit, how much is it? It can be asked. One point two crore SA grade for it. And J grade for it, sixty lakh, sixty lakhs. So, like this, some objective type questions can be asked out of this particular topic. The okay. What are the conditions to be observed? Quotation uh, left and right, नहीं बुला सकते fancy items के लिए नहीं बुला सकते urgency रहना चाहिए और उसके लिए provision रहना चाहिए estimate में quotation बुलाने के लिए जरूरी जरूरी है estimate में provision रहना क्योंकि funds payment करने के लिए sanctioned estimate में provision रहना है ये पूरा conditions है already मैं बता दिया tender acceptance powers इसमें और टेंडर नोटिस पीरियड ये क्वेश्चन मैं देखा था इसलिए पिछले क्वेश्चन पेपर्स में व्हाट इज द आइडियल टेंडर नोटिस पीरियड तीस दिन है 
जनरली फ्रॉम द डेट ऑफ पब्लिकेशन टिल द डेट ऑफ ओपनिंग न्यूज पेपर में एडवर्टाइजमेंट छपाने के बाद टेंडर ओपनिंग का डेट जो होना चाहिए उसका थर्टी डेज गैप रहना चाहिए तीस दिन वो इसको इट कैन बी रेड्यूस टू ट्वेंटी वन डेज बट विद अप्रूवल ऑफ डी आर एम एच ओ डी सी एम इट कैन बी रेड्यूस ट्वेंटी वन डेज और फोर्टीन डेज भी कर सकते हैं मगर उसके लिए फाइनेंस कंकरेंस चाहिए साइनिंग ऑफ एग्रीमेंट्स का भी मैं बता दिया था सीनियर स्किल का चार चार करोड़ तक है फोर क्रोस अब अप टू ट्वेंटी क्रोस इट इज जे ग्रेड और एनीथिंग मोर देन ट्वेंटी क्रोस अप टू हंड्रेड क्रोस इट इज एच ओडी दीज पावर्स आर लिंक्ड विथ सैंक्शनिंग अथॉरिटी फॉर द एक्सटेंशन ऑफ टाइम आइटम नंबर सिक्स और आइटम नंबर टेन बोथ आर इंटर रिलेटेड है आइटम नंबर टेन ऑफ एस ओ पी पार्ट ये बोलता है हु इज हैविंग पावर्स टू ग्रांट एक्सटेंशन ऑफ टाइम टू दी कॉन्ट्रैक्टर तो यहां टू सी आइटम नंबर सिक्स एडिशनल एस एस आर उतना जरूरत नहीं है आइटम्स का भी बता दिया था कल तो शेड्यूल में जो भी आइटम्स है उसके अलावा दो तीन चीज का आइटम का जरूरत पड़े तो ड्यूरिंग द कोर्स ऑफ एक्सिक्यूशन ऑफ वर्क उसको ऐड कर सकते मगर उसके लिए पावर्स दे दिया पांच लाख तक नहीं तो टेन परसेंट ऑफ ओरिजिनल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट वैल्यू विदाउट फाइनेंस कॉन्फ्रेंस डिपार्टमेंट कैन इंट्रोड्यूस द आइटम्स न्यू आइटम्स उसको बोलते हैं एडिशनल नॉन शेड्यूल आइटम्स कर सकते हैं दीज आर दवर्स गिवेन अंडर आइटम नंबर एट वेरिएशन कम बताती है डेफिनेटली यू मे गेट ए क्वेश्चन इन दिस वेरिएशन इन क्वांटिटीज इन वर्क स्टेटस में हर एक कॉन्ट्रैक्ट में वेरिएशन जरूर होता है स्पेशली एक्टवर्क्स में बैलस्ट वर्क्स में ब्रिज वर्क्स में और अपना बिल्डिंग वर्क्स में क्वांटिटीज आर बाउंड टू वेरी जो भी एस्टिमेट करते हैं उसको प्लस और माइनस वेरिएशन विल बी देयर सो अप टू ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट देर इज नो चेंज इन द एग्रीमेंट रेट वॉट एवर एग्रीमेंट रेट इज देयर द सेम एग्रीमेंट रेट विल बी पेड अप टू प्लस और माइनस ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट अगर वो वन ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट से लेके वन फोर्टी परसेंट तक होता है उसको माइनस टू हो जाता है तो वट इज द इंक्रीमेंटल रिडक्शन परसेंटेज फॉर द वेरिएशन इन क्वान्टिटी बियॉन्ड वन ट्वेंटी फाइव टू वन फोर्टी यू हैव टू से माइनस टू परसेंट then what is the incremental reduction for the quantity variation beyond 150 per, 140% and up to 150% you have to say minus 4% or 96% of the agreement rate so an objective or uh, fill in the blank like thing can be asked regarding this variation in quantities so individual items beyond 150% same minus 4% so like this 3 or 4 uh, Likely questions may be asked in this variation. So anything beyond one fifty percent, same minus four percent. What are the uh, items which are exempted from this variation? कल मैं आपको बता दिया था एक foundation item है और एक minor value items है. Okay, advances भी दे सकते हैं. It is limited to. It is more than twenty five crores. एक क्वेश्चन पूछ सकते हैं व्हेन एडवांसेस विल बी कैन बी गिवन टू द कॉन्ट्रैक्टर वेयर द टेंडर वैल्यू इज मोर देन 25 फाइव क्रोर्स ग्रांट ऑफ एडवांसेस इज परमिटेड विद द डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द पीएचओडी मोबिलाइजेशन एडवांस एंड मशीनरी एंड प्लांट एडवांस ये कब अगर आपका टेंडर वैल्यू 25 करोड़ से बढ़ के है तो यू कैन इनकॉर्पोरेट देन हाउ इट विल बी गिवन एट वॉट स्टेजेस टू स्टेजेस में दे सकते हैं एक एग्रीमेंट साइनिंग करते समय और दूसरा पांच परसेंट रिमेनिंग फाइव परसेंट एट द टाइम ऑफ फुल सेटअप ऑफ एस्टाब्लिशमेंट एंड फर्नीचर इक्विपमेंट एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा और इसके लिए इंटरेस्ट क्या लगता है दट एस्टेड आई डिंटेल नाउ यू प्लीज मेक नोट टेन परसेंट इज द इंटरेस्ट दट इज चार्ज ऑन द एडवांसेस वेन यू आर रिकवरिंग द एडवांस यू हैव टू रिकवर अलॉन्ग विद टेन परसेंट इंटरेस्ट एज पर रेलो बोर्ड सर्कुलर it is given for 2021 every year they will revise it but this year also they have uh, kept the same thing 10% so what is the rate of interest for the advances 
you can say 10 percent m and p it is limited to 10 percent of contract value or 75 percent of the value of the new m and p agar suppose aapka machinery contractor ne machinery kharidiya kharid liya uska dam hai uska cost hai 1 crore so how much m and p advance will be given to him 75 lakhs okay or 10 percent of the contract value jo bhi kam hai usme se that will be given as machinery and plant advance so iske liye kya conditions fulfill karna padta hai iske liye insurance chahiye ye machinery and plant ko insurance karna padta hai contractor ko aur this should be hypothecated in the name of president of india kyunki we have given advance to the contractor till he repays back the advance along with interest that machinery will be in the name of president of india matlab in the name of government that is called hypothecation so itke liye hypothecation deed bhi execute karna padta hai ek insurance karna aur ek hypothecation karna iske baad mein usko dena padta once he uh, come, clears the advance then the machinery will be uh, owned by him so hypothecation uh, will be over तो इसका रिकवरी कब करना 15 परसेंट काम होने के बाद और बिफोर इट टचेस 85 परसेंट द एडवांस अलॉन्ग विद इंटरेस्ट शुड बी रिकवर्ड रिकवरी ऑफ एडवांस इसके लिए ये एडवांस भी कैसे देते एगेनेस्ट सिक्योरिटी एगेनेस्ट बैंक गारंटी और फिक्स डिपॉजिट रिसीट और केवीपी और नेशनल सेविंग सर्टिफिकेट वो सिक्योरिटी लेने के बाद ही तो सिक्योरिटी कितना लेना वन टेन परसेंट क्योंकि इट हैज टू कवर द interest also in addition to the principal it has to cover the interest so 1 crore agar aap de rahe to how much security he has to give to railways he has to give 1.1 crore that is the meaning of this ye bhi mai bata diya tha release of performance guarantee or release of security pass kya kya items hai sop mein you can just remember this item number 11 most important under that all the releasing powers and waiver everything is there release of uh, next uh, determination of contract without financial repercussions agar railway ko zarurat nahi hai funds ke problem ke wajah se nahi to work uh, work ka zarurat nahi hai future mein aisa aisa problem bole to railway can pre close that means in advance we can close the contract without getting it completed उसको करते हैं सिक्सटी वन आपको एक क्वेश्चन पूछ सकते हैं अंडर वॉट क्लॉज ऑफ जी सी सी दॉन्ट्रैक्ट कैन बी प्री क्लोज और फोर क्लोज विदाउट फाइनेंशियल रिपोर्टिटी वन ऑफ जी सी सी इसके लिए फाइनेंस कंक्रेंस चाहिए क्यों आप विदाउट फाइनेंशियल क्लोज कर रहे तो आफ्टर टेकिंग फाइनेंस कंक्रेंस दिपार्टमेंट विल प्री क्लोज द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट सपोज कॉन्ट्रैक्ट अगर फेल हो गए तो उसको 62 के अंदर टर्मिनेट कर देते हैं तो वेन द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इज टर्मिनेटेड अंडर 62, टू बिकॉज ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्टर फेल्यूर देन उसका सिक्योरिटी डिपॉजिट और उसका परफॉर्मेंस गारंटी पूरा फरफिट हो जाता है परफिट मतलब दे नॉट बी गिवन टू दी कॉन्ट्रैक्टर दे विल बी रिटेन बाय द रेलवे दट इज अ मीनिंग कभी कभी टर्मिनेशन होने के बाद कॉन्ट्रैक्टर uh, ने रिक्वेस्ट करता है सर सम रिक्वेस्ट यू विल गिव विथ सम एक्सप्लेनेशन अगर डिपार्टमेंट रिवोक करना चाहते हैं वो रिवोक भी कर सकते हैं जो ओरिजिनल टेंडर जो एक्सेप्ट किया ही विल हैव द पावर्स टू डू द रिवोकेशन एज पर आइटम नंबर थर्टीन रिवोकेशन पावर्स एज पर आइटम नंबर थर्टीन ऑफ एस ओ पी पार्ट ये बट विथ कंकरेंस ऑफ फाइनेंस इसके लिए फाइनेंस कंकरेंस चाहिए रिवोकेशन के लिए Agency certificate also explained in case of single tenders, where the tender of the work has come without any expectation. That is due to some emergencies, some traffic dis disruption, uh, breaches of track. उसके वजह से आपको काम करना पड़ता है. तभी क्या करते हैं? You will not invite to open tender. It is a time-consuming process. So emergencies में जो भी काम बुला गया है single tender में, for that we have to send agency certificate to railway board in order to get the funds under special revenue okay 
उसका पावर्स भी दे दिया जैसे सर्टिफिकेट दिए चोरी का है अप टू फिफ्टी लैक्स चोरी का है अप टू ट्वेंटी फाइव लैक्स जे ग्रेड का है पांच लाख तो यू मे गेट ए क्वेश्चन वट इज द मॉनिटरी लिमिट पर सैंक्शनिंग ऑफ अर्जेंसी सर्टिफिकेट इन केस ऑफ पी एच ओडी से अप टू फाइव फिफ्टी लैक्स सो दीज थ्री मॉनिटरी लिमिट यू प्लीज रिमेम्बर एनीथिंग मोर देन फिफ्टी लैक्स इट हेज टू बी सैंक्शन बाई जनरल मैनेजर एंड इंजीनियरिंग कोडल प्रोविजन क्या है इसमें वन वन जीरो थ्री एंड वन वन जीरो फोर इसमें प्रोफॉर्म ऑफ अर्जेंसी सर्टिफिकेट इज गिवेन अंडर इलेवन जीरो थ्री उसको फिलअप करके जस्टिफिकेशन देकर फाइनेंस कंकरेंस लेके सैंक्शनिंग अथॉरिटी को पुटअप करना है जोनल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट का भी दो क्वेश्चन पूछ सकते हैं वॉट इज द वर्क ऑर्डर वैल्यू इन द जोनल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट इट इज इट शुड नॉट एक्सीड फाइव लैक्स जोनल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट जो मेंटेनेंस काम करने के लिए ट्रांसपोर्टेशन ऑफ मेटेरियल विद इन द ऑफिस प्रमिस को पूरा काम करने के लिए जोन फिक्स होता है अपना रेलवे क्वार्टर्स जो होता है और रेलवे ऑफिस बिल्डिंग्स जो होता है उसका वाइट वॉशिंग पूरा उसका मेंटेनेंस जो भी काम है वो पूरा जोनल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट में करते हैं पर ईच वर्क डेज नॉट इन्वाइट सेपरेट टेंडर्स ऑल वर्क विच आर रिक्वायर्ड इन कनेक्शन विद मेंटेनेंस दे विल बी कम अंडर कवर्ड अंडर जोनल टेंडर देन जोनल टेंडर विल बी फाइनलाइज फॉर अ पीरियड ऑफ वन ईयर यू मे गेट ए क्वेश्चन वॉट इज द पीरियड ऑफ जोनल कॉन्ट्रैक्ट It is one year. From what date it starts? First July to 30th June, on yearly basis. And during this period, the work orders will be given to the contractor, zonal contractor who is selected for that, and he has to complete all the work orders in that period only. And if anything, any work is uh, any work order is remains pending beyond 30th June of the next year, DRM's approval has to be taken with finance concurrence. Because no pending work order should be carried forward in the next financial year without prior approval of DRM. So that is about the zonal contracts. A completion certificate be forty eight one ke mitha bhi dena after work is completed in all respects and security deposit everything is released. Then finally work completion certificate dena hai under forty eight one of GCC. So this is very very important. जस्ट ये फार्टी एट वन के अंदर सर्टिफिकेट ऑफ कंप्लीशन देने के बाद सपोज इफ एनी इम्परफेक्शन और डिफेक्ट और नोटिस देन यू कैन कॉल द कॉन्ट्रैक्टर बैक अंडर क्लॉज नंबर फार्टी एट टू ऑफ जी सी सी टू रेक्टिफाई द डिफेक्ट और इम्परफेक्शन और श्रिंकेजेस जनरली दी श्रिंकेजेस यू विल फाइंड इन एर्थ वर्क और बैलस्ट वर्क वेर द वर्ल्ड विल बी देर देर वी हैव टू बी वेरी केयरफुल वाई इशू इन द कंप्लीशन सर्टिफिकेट सो Part eight two contractor cannot escape from the liability of attending to any defect or any imperfection. So we have got the powers to call back the contractor. Measurements also I discussed with you yesterday. Very important one question may come in this part uh, eight one uh, the GCC uh, stipulates measurements can be witnessed by contractor himself or contractor's authorized representative. Who is called generally GPA holder? GPA means General Power of Attorney. And it is not possible for the contractors to come for each and every work to inspect and uh, uh, witness the measurements. So he may be having so many works. So what he will do? He will employ uh, one or two persons, and he will be giving GPA to uh, those employees. and that gpa has to be approved by department gpa general power of attorney both important is a question may come gpa what is gpa general power of attorney aur wo gp me kaun sa kaam ke liye usko power de diya for witnessing the measurements for signing the measurements book for signing the bills for making the correspondence ye pura vagera vagera gpa me jo bhi usko works de diya uske mutabik usko allow karna एक बार ऑब्जेक्शन अगर है तो एक बार रेस कर सकते हैं एज पर क्लास नंबर फोर्टी नाइन फोर्टी फाइव और सपोज इफ यू रेज ऑब्जेक्शन विथ रिगार्ड टू मेजरमेंट देन वन ओनली वन डेट विल बी गिवन जनरली विद इन ए वीक फॉर रीमेजरमेंट ऑन द डे वॉट एवर मेजरमेंट आर रिकॉर्डेड दैट विल बी फाइनल एंड बाइंडिंग बोथ ऑन रेलवे एंड द कॉन्ट्रैक्टर 
again further objection will not be allowed as per this clause number 41 and uh, what is the uh, md will be maintained all the measurements will be recorded in measurement books it is called md you may get a question what is md md means measurement book what is the form of md 1313 of engineering code okay this measurement book uh, what is the period for which md should be kept 10 years that also you may get the preservation of measurement book is for a period of 10 years as per codal provision then register you have to maintain uh, the department will maintain register of measurement books uh, how many books are given to uh, different different agents for different different contractors that register has to be maintained okay and who can record the measurements this is very important uh, uh, senior supervisor in the grade pay of 4600 4800 and above they can directly record the measurements in the measurement book they have to sign and all the measurements recorded by them along with the contractors witnessing they have to be test checked by the an up to 25% for the normal works up to 100% in case of earth works and ballast works so what is the percentage of the test check for the ballast for an a question may come you have to say 100% okay for routine works normal works it is 25% test check that is one measurements and test check both are very important and bills recoverable form now this bills recoverable form is uh, the amount which is due from the private parties to railways for that uh, finance it form a 1138 it is from the accounts code this uh, letter this demand notice should go to the uh, outside parties this bills recoverable will be done from the private parties who have been given earning contracts sleeper contracts land licensing agreements parking uh, scooter parking agreements car parking agreements all these people atm uh, uh, banks which are holding atms they have to pay the license fee from these uh, parties the amount towards land licensing or licensing has to be recovered by the finance for that this bills recoverable form is given in accounts code under a1138 this is a format for writing to the parties by the finance and this uh, notice will be copied to the concerned executive concerned executive it can be engineering department it can be sld department or it can be any other department commercial department senior dcm so this demand that is asking for the uh, remittance of the license fee that is called bills recoverable will be copied to the executive also contractors ledgers you have to maintain accounts relating to contractor should be kept as personal accounts in contractor ledger under 1483 of engineering code and a separate folio should be opened in contractor's ledger for each contractor suppose one contractor is doing five uh, works five agreement executing all the five agreements for that contractor exclusively one separate folio will be allotted amount kitna liya kitna bills pass ho gaya or pura name of the work this is called ledger this is cross verification closing of contractor's account finally the contractor account has to be closed after everything work is everything is completed after releasing the final bill after releasing the performance guarantee security deposit wagera wagera the account should be closed as per 1484 of engineering code okay within one month the contractor should accept the payment given by the railway suppose if the payment is not done within one month even after sending then that amount will be credited to deposit miscellaneous because that particular contractor may be having some claims so he may not be happy with the amount that is cleared by the department so he wants to claim something more than what department has passed so that is called claim that will be resolved under 1485 separately recover bills recoverable register also you have to maintain first you are sending notice under 1138 again you are making in a register you are may have to make the entries this your duty starts as and when you receive the agreement copies from the 
executive department immediately you have to make an entry in the bills recoverable register when you have to send the uh, that is notice that is called bills recoverable form generally before april we collect one year in advance the total license fee we will not collect monthly please remember every month there will not be any recovery it will be recovered one month in one year in advance for the next financial year starting from april past you will be collecting before march itself march itself in addition to that one year license fee as a security deposit also you will be taking because suppose in case if the contractor or the, the private party of the license holder is not making the payment in the next year ka then you can recover you can forfeit his security deposit and terminate the next year license in advance or in between also because already railway is having security deposit of one year license fee that is very very important so it is not after that recovering but what i have seen personally so many arrears are piling up in spite of writing and the audit people are raising objections so when when you are dealing with this particular topic okay you have to be very careful in the bills recoverable section the due date of payment and this review your accounts officer senior afr dfm whoever it is he will be reviewing once in a month what are the summary of outstanding bills now you have sent all the bills say worth of some 5 crores but you have recovered only 4 and half crores so balance 50 lakhs not recovered so from which party it is pending that particular review will be done by your accounts officer and action will be taken in consultation with the executive department so extension of currency also yesterday i discussed with you it can be two types if railway delays when pvc will be there price variation clause in case the tender value is more than 5 crores suppose this particular agreement is less than 5 crores that also you will not get that means up to 5 crores you will not get anything except this original agreement rate no compensation no loss for claim nothing whereas in 17b instead of, which is granted because of the contractor failure usme ld lag jata hai liquidated damages liquidated damages means penalty for delay in completion of the work that is that should not exceed 5% of the total contract value so this will be done every uh, every week there is a percentage given 0.2% like that so when your accounts people are recovering this uh, liquidated damages the total recovered liquidated damages should not exceed 5% so a question may come what is the maximum liquidated damages that can be recovered from the contractor if extension is granted under 17b it is 5% that's all it is it should not exceed 5% yesterday somebody was asking force majeure so it is simple 17 class 17 without suffix of a or b so it is neither railway at fault nor contractor is at fault so it is beyond both the parties in case of uh, commotion sabotage war hostility or uh, some epidemics pandemics strikes lockouts jiske wajah se kaam ho nahi pa so there will be complete stand still okay so everything has come to stand still in that situation this force major clause will be invoked so for that 30 days time will be notified from the date of occurrence so neither party shall by reason of such event be entitled to terminate this contract so railway should not terminate nor the contract contractor should uh, you know request for termination but for closure railway should not terminate the contract nor the contractor should request for the closure of the contract they have to wait for these conditions to become normal after normalcy is recovered then the 
whole contract schedule will be rescheduled. The time for completing the remaining uh, work will be rescheduled again without any imposition of the, any penalty or liquidity damages. This is about the first measure. This is available both in stores and works contract. Post payment audit also, I told you yesterday, in case if you are making any overpayment by oversight, by mistake, payment, some excess payment has been made to the contractor and it is almost two, six months over or one year over. Now during audit checking, it has become, it has been noticed that some excess payment has been made. Okay, just like a budget, 12 lakhs payment has been made. So how to recover this extra 2 lakhs? A class 51 2 GCC aapko kaam mein aata hai. So you have to invoke the provisions of 51 2 of GCC and you will write to the contractor. Generally, you will not be having any contracts in any other division of your railway. In that case, what you have to do? You have to take legal action against him. So all these provisions are available for the recovery of excess payment in case if it has been paid as per 51.2. Now here GCC for service contracts, a special GCC is there for uh, service contracts. Works contract separate GCC is there. Service contract separate GCC is there. Eligibility criteria already I discussed in the beginning of the class. In service contracts, if the tender value is more than 50 lakhs, the eligibility criteria has to be stipulated. Okay. And the technical eligibility is, he should have completed 35% of the advertised value in the last three years. Okay. So service contract, tender suppose if it is one crore, he should have completed 35% in service contracts in the last three years. And incomplete work, that is ongoing service contract also, where 35% of your present advertised value has already been completed, they are also eligible. Whereas in work standards, it is not like that. All the works should have been completed. Out of the completed works, the 30% three works, 40% two works, and 60% one work will come. Here in this case, incomplete work, service contract work also is welcome. But only thing is, the percentage should exceed 35%. That is the only difference. And similarly, here three years, there it is seven years, one time period, technical. Now coming to financial, you should have received 1.5 times, same as in the case of works tenders, of contracts, same 1.5 times of advertised value towards works done. Work done for private individuals, not considered. Suppose the contractors have done for some private agencies, same service contract, that credential will not be considered in service contract. However, work executed with companies having more than 500 crores turnover, like LNT, Reliance, all these companies are having crores of turnovers. So in such companies where the turnover is more than 500 crores and which are listed in the stock exchanges, even in work status also, this is there, please, please remember. Work done for private individuals where the turnover is more than 500 crores. That is considered for financial and technical. So that is generally what are the examples of service contracts? I have given outsourcing works, housekeeping works, pest control, coach cleaning. These are all done by mechanical department, environment and housekeeping management department. So all these contracts come under service contracts. So Railway Board has formulated a separate GCC for this uh, service contracts in the year 2018. Now, some important abbreviations I have given here. Proposals for new works to be taken up in the next year. It is in the works program module. So all the new works have to be fed in this module with the justification, with the finance concurrence, everything. The module is there. It is we have to feed the data in this IRPSM module through online. 
so this uh, module will have the moment you are entering into this it will generate id unique identification number every work will have unique id that means suppose i am entering one work for ballast collection of ballast at db nagar depot so what i do in the irpsm module i just enter this data with all the particulars value section estimate then uh, uh, description of the work rates everything after submitting it it will display the identification number id number this id number will remain till the completion of this particular work so at the time of calling the tender at the time of finalization of the agreement at the time of passing of the bills final bills release of security deposit completion report etc etc the same identification number will carry on there will not be any duplication of the works isme jo facility hai duplication nahi hota hai irps module mein bahut important hai work will not be duplicated okay it's a 14 digit number hai usko 14 digits automatically it will generate system will generate then what is cc contractor certificate jo bhi kaam karta hai sab ongoing bills usko bolte hai running bills bolte hai nahi to generally it is uh, nomenclature is cc1 cc2 cc3 like that cc ka matlab hai contractor certificate in work tenders it is a department which will prepare the bill it is not contractor who prepares the bill whereas in case of store tender it is a supplier who raises the invoice who raises the bill and submits along with the consignment particulars delivery channels everything whereas in case of work tenders it is a department which has to prepare the bill that is called contractor certificate what is fcc final contractor certificate that matlab at this stage no work is left no physical work is left out final measurements are recorded after final measurements are recorded it is called final contractor certificate then what is pbg performance bank guarantee performance bank guarantee okay then what is emd and this money deposit what is the full form okay. some objective type okay. may be asked what is the full form what is the expansion of this sd security deposit what is the pvc price variation clause what is the limit of incorporation of the price variation clause more than 5 crores then what is irwcms indian railways works contract management system now in the year 2019 railway board has created this module this is called web based application like uh, uh, irps so they have developed this module with the help of chris and in this we have to enter the loa details agreement details running bills passing of the bills for the contractor everything through online only we have to enter in this so railway board will see how many contracts are getting executed in south central railway and by which department and what are the amounts still to be paid and what are the amounts already paid so now this is going to spread to other divisions also in south central railway they have selected sikindrabad division for implementation of ir wcms indian railway works contract management system next letter of credit <coughs> lc yesterday uh, somebody was asking lc what do you mean by this <coughs> this is nothing but cash but it is given by railway towards payment to the contractor for any bill which is costing about 10 lakhs so what is the minimum limit for issue of letter of credit then you have to say it it should be 10 lakhs and above 10 lakhs and above instead of making the payment to the contractor suppose railway department has to make some 35 lakhs payment to the contractor so railway is not in a position to uh, release this 35 lakhs as a cash through online so what railway will do railway will issue letter of credit so this should be done in the tendering stage itself that payment will be made to the contractor through letter of credit for that 
contractor has to agree then only has to participate once this is agreed then if the fund's position is critical then the railway will issue letter of credit by showing this letter of credit elsewhere he can also participate uh, in the other railway tenders or he can also purchase something this is letter of credit is nothing but open check with values it is issued by railway department to by finance so that is lc more than 10 lakhs payment only up to 10 lakhs no lc next ipas what is the expansion of ipas it is your subject integrated payroll and accounting system ipas so all the payments are done only through ipas okay co6 generation co7 all those things then gcc what is the expansion of gcc general conditions of contract irafm that this present institute is now it's called indian railways institute of finance management then what is ireps indian railways electronic procurement system then what is gfr <clears throat> this is very important G gfr means general financial rules <clears throat> definitely you may get a <clears throat> bit uh, what is the expansion of gfr it is given this is the general financial rules 2017 2017 in this whatever rules are framed by the ministry of finance for different different items like land items like security items all these things they are applicable to all the central government organizations for example the railway board has issued one circular regarding the performance guarantee that it should be collected only 3% up to 31 12 now those instructions are given based on rule number 161 of gfr 2017 so minister of finance has issued these exemptions that is relaxation in collection of the security monies from the contractors for the works executed for the government so based on that railway board has issued guidelines so finance ministry will issue office memorandum based on the gfr and based on that om again railway department will be issuing so gfr 2017 is very very important next uh, Uh, important abhi ir uss so are already i told you indian railways unified standard schedule of rates so uh, this is the basic document where the items of the works will be picked up and the estimate will be prepared okay when what is gte global tender inquiry so railway board said clearly wherever your tender value is more than 200 crores estimated to be more than 200 crores then only you can make enquiry globally that is called global tender enquiry it is not a must but below 200 crores no global tender enquiry should be there that means only the indian manufacturers the manufacturers or the firms who are present within india they only have to participate in the tenders up to 200 crores above 200 crores if uh, railway department feels that there is no indigenous technology then they can go for global tender inquiry for example i can tell you this uh, uh, metro rail coaches are there these metro rail coaches are imported from say some korean uh, south korea or uh, outside india because these uh, coaches suitable for this metro this thing they have been manufactured and developed by them only so it is done through global tender so that is called global tender inquiry so up to 200 crores no so you may get a uh, bit up to 200 crores no global tender inquiry more than 200 crores only global tender inquiry can be made then what is mean by boot b o o t build own operate and transfer so here we have got a boot system in mechanized laundry so our mechanical department is there so which uh, enters into contracts with this mechanized laundry so when you are traveling in the ac coaches you will be supplied with the bed sheet and linen so all these uh, linens will be uh, sent to this uh, contractor who has got this mechanized laundry contract that is a 15 year contract based on the ppp mode public private partnership mode so it is a 15 year contract it is called boot laundry mechanized laundry that is after 15 years that entire thing will be transferred to railway so till 15 years he will be owning he will build he will own it he will operate it and he will transfer after period of 15 years so that is the time limit you may get a question what is the time limit 
per book operation of the mechanized laundry. You can say it is 15 years. It is invited by, it is done by, executed by only mechanical department, PCME. What is GST? This, of course, you know, Goods and Services Act, uh, uh, Goods and Services and Taxes Act, uh, 2017, they have been implemented with effect from July 2017. Annual Maintenance Contract, AMC. Where this AMC is used, these AMCs are uh, entered into for maintaining the equipments or the machinery which are being supplied by the OEMs, original equipment manufacturers. Our track machines are all are uh, imported track machines like Glasser India. So to maintain those machines, these Glasser India original equipment manufacturer, they have nominated only few agencies. So from them only, we have to enter into AMC that is called annual maintenance contract. So you have got the powers to enter into AMC under part C, part C miscellaneous matters. Next the MSOP, model schedule of powers. This is given by railway board. Earlier every railway used to have separate SOP. Now railway board has made it uniform. It is called MSOP 2018. And you have to see this book for reference purpose for uh, connecting relevant powers delegated with uh, various levels of officers, okay. So, and you have to see the correction slips also, issued from time to time. What is TDC? Tender document cost. So, the tender document cost, what standard it starts from 1000 rupees up to 25,000 rupees, based on the value of the tender. So, up to uh, 5, 5 lakhs, it is 1000, 5 to 20 lakhs, it is 2000, 20 to uh, 50 lakhs, it is 3000, like that. So, this tender document cost will be recovered. Some important uh, labor uh, acts I have mentioned. In this, uh, I request you to concentrate on this 55D. Okay, you may get a question, objective type question. Uh, what is the percentage of cess to be recovered under this particular 55D? That is called Building and Other Construction Workers uh, Welfare Cess Act. It is there since 1996. So this is now in GCC under 55D. Clause number 55D, this provision is there. This is the labor legislation. As per this, when you are making the payment to the contractor, you will be recovering, you will be deducting some statutory deductions. For example, GST you will be deducting. IT, income tax you will be deducting. Then you have to deduct this cess also this is called labor cess it is equal to one percent so finally you will be passing the bills for the payment so you have to recover all these statutory along with this labor cess that is one percent then only net payment will be payment uh, made to the contractor so this is what is the percentage of cess as per this act you have to say one percent okay then workman compensation act 1923 suppose any contractor laborers get killed Okay, so the compensation should be paid to the deceased. Jo bhi mar jata hai contractor ka admi, jo kaam karte samay, wo track overrun, due to overrun by train, whatever it is. Who will make the payment first? Who will make the compensation payment? It is a railway. Why? Because railway is the principal employer. Uske baad mein railway department contractor se recover karte dete. Jobi compensation immediately to pay karta hai as per the compensation decided by the commissioner for compensation, labor uh, compensation commissioner. Both that he will be appointed by the labor department. So, whatever compensation he decides that will be paid immediately by the principal employer that is railways. Then, after that, it will be recovered from the contractor bill. So, the contractor has to ensure the safety of. His laborer who are working, especially on the tracks, in the track annual works, in the bridge annual works, where the safety works are involved. So that is about this. Uh, and other provisions you can just make note of. But, and another important, what is Shramik Kalyan portal? Shramik Kalyan portal is, is a labor uh, portal. The website is this. Contractor, jisko LOA milne ke baad, letter of acceptance lene ke baad, he has to 
fill up these details by logging on to that website www.kalyanportal.com in that once if he registers under this uh, that is enough you will be getting from one uh, registered number the same registered number will be applicable for all the future contracts so jab bhi aap loa receive karne ke baad he has to wo enter karna hai shramik kalyan portal mein kya kya dena hai usme kitne workmen ko engage kiya what are the wage payment details what are the pf contribution made by them bonus details etc on monthly basis he has to fill up this is very important because the government wants to ensure that minimum wages is payment is made to the contractors staff contractors laborers okay that is why this shramik kalyan portal has been made mandatory so class number 54 and 55 may a web based e application hai usme you have to abide by otherwise wo kaam karne ke baad jo bhi payment hona hai usko payment nahi karte unless he uploads the details of this shramik uh, kalyan portal so this is a very good uh, step introduced by government of india to ensure that payment whatever payment contractor receives he makes the part of that to his staff to his laborers skilled or unskilled or whatever it is and that can be seen in this uh, web based portal so these are the yeah uh participants uh, any queries any doubts uh, from yesterday's or today's this thing you are please welcome to ask so that yeah participants uh, i am uh, unmuting all the participants yeah uh now you can speak to the faculty Hello, and you can ask queries sir, Hello, sir. Uh, some queries in the message box uh please check sir uh, please build recovery in hindi how is sir. authorized for objections and more in advance allocation sir one sir the for measurement book who will make objections sir objections for measurement book sir Ab, ab, who will make up the contractor? Contractor. No, no, sir. You, me, Jepper, sir. After measurement, this kind of thing, that office will submit. Jee, sir, can Jepper, sir, and that kind. Um, measurement, this kind of thing, what sign just said, that within one week, he can raise the objection. And in writing, he has to give. Okay. I am having discrepancies with regard to measurements, sir. Okay. Today, what is that? After the Malayan Jalate, we have to give one plate. वन वीक डेट इवालास्ट बी प्रसेंट इफ नाट प्रसिपार्टेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटेंटे
क्या मिस्टर संजय कुमार सर नो मोर क्वेरी सर पार्टिसिपेंट्स आई एम अपलोडिंग दिस डॉक्यूमेंट प्लीज डाउनलोड फ्रॉम द चार्ट बॉक्स Yeah, uh, it is uh, uploading in the chat box. Please download. Yeah. If there are no queries, uh, will you end up this session? Okay, sir. Sir, please. Yeah, please ask. Sir, what will be the difference between the special tender clause and general tender clause? Ah, uh -huh. good. General conditions of contract and special conditions of contract. both will be a part of the tender and if any condition is appearing in both general conditions of contract and special conditions and if there is a discrepancy then which one will prevail only special conditions of contract will prevail sir please speak in hindi hindi mein ha theek hai gcc mein jo bhi conditions hai actually 64 uh, conditions hai general conditions of contract mein special conditions of contract jo gcc mein nahi hota hai work ke mutabik सपोज आप एथवर्क है बैलेंस वर्क है उसके लिए क्या क्या क्लासेस लगना चाहिए उसके मुताबिक स्पेशल कंडीशन ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट को ड्राफ्ट करते okay. ये स्पेशल कंडीशन में जीसीसी का जो भी कंडीशन रिफ्लेक्ट नहीं होता है अगर एक जो कंडीशन रिपीट होता है उधर भी इधर भी और जिसमें डिस्क्रिपेंसी है मतलब जिसमें थोड़ा अंतर अंतर है तो कौन सा अप्लीकेबल होता है कौन सा प्रिवेल होता है स्पेशल कंडीशन मतलब स्पेशल कंडीशन ऑफ कॉन्ट्रैक्ट को ज्यादा इंपॉर्टेंस है जीसीसी से लेके कब डिफरेंस अगर डिफरेंस है तो इंटरप्रिटेशन में नहीं तो समझाने में तो वो है स्पेशल कंडीशन कॉन्ट्रैक्ट जो भी कंडीशन है वो वर्क का रिलेटेड से होता है मतलब कब उस बैलेंस है उसका मेजरमेंट कैसा करना है उसका फार्मूला दे दिया जाता है और उसमेंट कैसा करना चाहते हैं वो स्पेशल कंडीशन में आता है जीसीसी में वो नहीं पता जाता है जीसीसी में जनरल है जनरल ओके थैंक यू क्या ये नंबर फिरिस अरे इट इज अ 130 दैट इज टाइम फॉर क्लोजिंग अ या पार्टिसिपेंट्स अ Thank you for participating. The concluding the uh, the TA seminar training is concluded. We have of the Eripa. My thank faculty, Sri uh, M Chandrasekhar Garu, Chief Office Superintendent, working in PC office in South Central Railway, for uh, explaining the this contract management and ask clarifying the all the doubts of the participants. Hmm? Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. Participants, uh, all the best for your appendix two examination. you can join from monday onwards daily morning 11 to 12:45 one session and evening that is 3 to 4:45 session the sessions are continue up to march 11th as per the present schedule uh, that is a common title that is railway accounts and finance covering all the subjects see it is not for uh, specific for uh, appendix 2 or 3 rr ldc for all the departmental exams uh, these classes are uh, useful You can inform your other departments, uh, colleagues also. Yeah. Thank you, Anand. Have a nice day.